as shown. And you put the string through the hole in the center. It may not work with you, it may not have a balance and banner. But it doesn't happen to you can try to use anything that is hitting it. And you observe what happens with that. Of course, air above the flame gets heated and results in conventional currents. And of course, you'll have the warm air rising up once, then cooler, more dense air flowing downwards. Okay. okay? And that would cause the paper then to rotate. Okay. The other thing we can demonstrate and demonstrate convection in liquids. We can now have a beaker. Water, then turn it at one corner, at one corner, then heat from that corner. And gradually, what is seen is that the color of the potassium component is seen to be moving. Of course, it's not indicated, but it would be moving from this point and it would it moving in a curve. And as the water continues, and you should eventually you'll have or the water becoming homogeneously purple, having a purple color throughout. Okay. If you have an arrangement like you have in the next diagram, Diagram. You have two flasks that way the upper flask is not completely filled, but has water that is not not colored, and we have the lower one with colored water. Then we heat the lower flask, and with time it gradually flows into the water in the upper flask. And basically what is happening, when we hit water in the lower flask, which is colored, it expands and rises up. Then you have cooler, more dense water flowing from the upper flask to the glass tube. And this sets up convection of currents and eventually you find water in both flasks having the same color. Of course, when you talk of land breeze, sea breeze, it's a similar arrangement, isn't it? That is convection. Okay. Do you have any questions so far? Any question? So the silence means there's no I'm question here. Yeah? about the natural water heater. Mm. The immersion water heater. Immersion heater. Immersion heater. Yes. Okay. Okay. So basically, what we have with the immersion heater. We have a coil that has high resistance. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. We have a coil, and the coil is heated electrically. Then we have that heat being conducted directly to water. And if you ever used an immersion heater and you use maybe a large bucket, you notice that the water boils at the top. But at the bottom, the water really remains relatively cold. It's just because of 
the fact that water is a poor conductor of heat. Sasa. Yes. The question answered now. Yes, it is. Okay. 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 So the next. So the next. The next. Thing the next is, thing is convection. convection. Not convection, but radiation. radiation. And this is actually the. And this is actually the fastest mode of heat. Transfer. Fastest mode of heat transfer. The fastest mode of heat transfer, and that is radiation. Radiation. And what we have with radiation is that heat is transferred in form of wave. Wave is fast because electromagnetic waves move at the speed of light. They move at the speed of of light, electromagnetic waves move or electromagnetic radiations move at the speed of. The thing about radiation is that it does not require. It does not require a material medium. Material media does not require a material medium. We are not getting you, Malibu. So, does not require a material. Can't hear. That Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Jackay. Yeah. Are we there? Yes.
Are we there? Yes, we are in volume. Yes. So, sorry about that. I think my connection is not very stable. So we're saying radiation does not require a material medium. And we have the heat being transferred in form of an electromagnetic radiation. OK? In form of an electromagnetic yes. radiation to a vacuum, it will be transmitted through air. And therefore, we have now the heat. So, there is either roaring and all that. And with, with radiation, it's interesting because we have different the nature of the surface affecting the either the emission or absorption of radiation for example if you wear black clothes on a warm day you really feel hot you end up being very hot if you wear dark clothes on a on a warm day but when you wear brightly colored clothes on a warm day, you're not, you don't feel as hot as when you wear dark colored clothes. The reason being that dark surfaces are good absorbers of radiation. And the same way they're good absorbers, they're also good emitters. So if you have maybe a hot liquid, a, a hot body, which is dark, and one that is shiny, the dark body will be lose heat faster than the cold one because it's dark and it is a good emitter of radiation. Okay. Yes. So black bodies are good absorbers of radiation and they're also good emitters. They're good emitters of radiation. So if you have a dark object that is hot to cool faster than one that is brightly colored. Brightly colored. Yeah. Yeah. So black bodies are both good emitters and good absorbers of radiation. You can think of an electric kettle. You've seen an electric kettle, is it? Have you seen one that is black? No. Why would it not be black? Because it will lose its purpose of uh, retaining the heat. Because if after after the let's say water has been heated, it needs to be it needs to be retained instead of uh, being emitted. Meaning, if it was black, it will emit it will emit the heat that has been gained from the previous heating. That's not like not even even during the process of heating. Yeah, if it's dark, it will be emitting and losing some of the heat. So it will take a very long time to heat the water. But when it is shiny, 
most of the heat, as we said, it's an electromagnetic radiation. It will not be, it will not be emitted. And therefore we have the heat being retained and therefore the water will heat faster. Okay. Yes. yes. So what are some of the applications? I've talked of the electric cattle, which has a coat, a chrome coat to make it shiny. And this reduces heat loss to the surrounding by radiation. Of course, you have the electric ions, which are silver coated. And of course, to minimize heat loss by radiation. Then we have greenhouses. No greenhouse phenomenon has been something that has been come very popular in the last few few years, yeah? And what happens yeah. is that with the greenhouse, there's the top covering which is transparent, yeah? Yes. So it allows energy from the sun into the greenhouse. And once in, the heat is absorbed by the plants, the objects in the, inside the greenhouse. Of course, they also emit radiation. But the radiation they emit is not strong enough to penetrate the material. So heat is trapped in the greenhouse, remains relatively warm throughout. And that way we can have the, because of the heat and the temperature being that way, always warm, that keeps, makes the, the plants to grow faster than in normal, normal circumstances. When it's cloudy, what happens? When it's cloudy, is the day cold or warm? No, not even the day, even night, during the night, when, the, when it's cloudy, you notice that the nights are warmer when, than the clear nights, yeah? When, it, when it's cloudy, the nights will be warmer than when it's clear when the sky is clear, largely because any radiation that is being emitted from the earth is reflected by the cloud. Brian, once here. Yes. I'm not going to ask you 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 to That's okay, one of the applications that you have, and one thing that is very popular and that is used on a day to day basis on the whole aspect of heat transfer is the vacuum flask. The vacuum. Flask. You know, some people call it the Damos flask, yeah? Yes. That's called a vacuum. It's called a vacuum flask. Damos is actually a brand name of one of the vacuum flasks. Damos is one of the brand names. Okay? Yes. And the vacuum flask, it was developed around 1890. It was developed in 1890 by one person by the name of Sir James Ivarin. Ivarin, I-V-A-R-I-N. And the idea is to keep a liquid hot or to keep a cold liquid cold, depending on what you put in it. For example, if you put ice cold water, it will remain cold. If you put hot liquid, it remains hot. And of course, it's made of a double-walled glass vessel, a double-walled glass vessel. And the space in between the double walls, the space in between the double walls of the flask is evacuated. And of course, the point where the air is blown out is sealed. And the outer surface of the inner wall, the outer surface of the inner wall 
and the inner surface of the outer wall are silvered. What is the purpose of silver? What is the purpose of silvering? Bright colors are not well, we They minimize heat loss by radiation. That's good. Prevent heat loss by both conduction and convection. It's a vacuum. There's no, then the mouth is covered with an insulating cork. We have an insulating stopper. Use just a cork, and this prevents heat loss by evaporation. Evaporation mainly by evaporation. Okay. So in a nutshell, that is heat transfer. That is thermal. Transfer. What is thermal transfer? So you have a recap. What is heat transfer? What is heat transfer? Aaron. What is heat transfer? the exchange of energy in the form of it between bodies at different temperatures. Yeah, that's right. It's a transfer or it's an exchange or transfer of heat between bodies or within a two points of a body that's in form of of heat. In form of heat. What are the modes of heat transfer? Radiation. Radiation. Conduction. Convection. Radiation. Convection and radiation. Those are the three modes of heat transfer. Uh -huh. What are the factors that affect conduction? Conduction depends on what are the factors that conduction depends on? Type of material. Okay. Yeah. Type of material? Temperature difference. Mm -hmm. Temperature difference? Cross sectional area. Cross sectional yeah. area. Length. And length. length. How does length affect the rate of heat transfer? The length of the material, the faster it is transmitted. The shorter the length of the material, the higher the rate of heat transfer. Or we say that the rate of heat transfer is inversely proportional to the length of the material. The rate of heat transfer length of the material. And what's the relationship? How does the rate of heat transfer, how is it affected by cross-sectional area? How is the rate? The number of section area are many compared to a material with a cross-sectional area, which is small. Mm -hmm. So how is the rate of heat transfer affected? The what is the, the relationship? Larger, what is the larger? The larger the, 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 area, the higher the heat transfer. The rate of heat transfer. Yes. So the, if you say it mathematically, we say that the rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to the area of cross section. Then what is the other one? The 
temperature difference yeah how does temperature difference affect the rate of heat transfer what is the relationship between the temperature difference and the rate of heat transfer thermal conduction increases with the rate of temperature difference so the rate of heat transfer increases with increase in the temperature the difference between the ends of the conductor okay and of course with the materials is it that different materials have different thermal conductivities now if we had two objects two two containers one that is painted black that has a dull surface and another one that is brightly colored containing equal amounts of liquid and placed the same distance from a source of heat after some time which one would be at a higher temperature and why so you have two conductor two containers of the same materials the same size containing equal amounts of liquid at equal distances from a source of heat but one is painted black and one is shining which one will have a higher which liquid will be at a higher temperature after some time and why the liquid in the container painted black will be at a higher temperature because yeah. um, dark colors absorb more radiation heat from radiation than bright colors good the one that has a black this painted black will be at a higher temperature because black or dull surfaces are good absorbers of radiation so we'll have the radiation being absorbed by the black but with the shiny one most of the liquid most of the most of the radiation will be reflected okay now on the converse if you have two containers identical but one painted black one painted silvery one silvery one black then they contain equal amounts of liquid at the same temperature after some time which one will be at a lower temperature which one will be at a lower temperature and why black one the, the one that is painted black that's jakai yeah why yes because dark surfaces are good emitters of radiation because dark surfaces are good emitters of radiation. That's good. Okay. Now, how can we show that liquids are poor conductors of of heat? How can we show that liquids are poor conductors of heat? How can we show? that liquids are poor conductors of heat. How can we demonstrate that? How can we demonstrate that liquids are poor conductors of heat, for example, water? I could show that water is a poor conductor of heat. Why don't you give it a shot? Wants to try that. Presley. How can we demonstrate that water is a poor conductor of heat? Excuse me, teacher. Yes. I have a question. Yes. 
um, can we say that liquids are conductors of heat oil? We say that um, transfer of heat in fluids is through convection. No, we can, um, the fluids, the liquids are generally poor conductors of heat. Generally, they're poor conductors of heat. Liquids are poor conductors of heat. How can we show that they're poor conductors of heat? Um, we can put um, li a liquid in yeah. a boiling tube. Yes. A piece of ice. Yeah. Covered with, um, let's say, tied to a sinker. Mm -hmm. Then we tilt the boiling tube. Yeah. And heat the top of the boiling tube. Heat it at the top. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then what happens? We'll observe that the the liquid will boil at the top. Yeah. Well, but the ice at the bottom of the boiling tube will not melt. That's good, yes. We just have ice, wrap it with a wire goes. And we wrap it with a wire goes to make it sink to the bottom of the boiling tube. Then we heat the boiling tube. And then the water boils without the ice melting. Yes, Aaron. Aaron. Yes. So your hand was up or you wanted to answer? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. You're asking something? No, 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 I mistakenly put it there. Okay. So generally liquids are poor conductors of heat. In general, of course, there's some that, we, for example, when you think of mercury, mercury being a liquid, it's liquid, but it will be a good conductor of heat. But one thing about mercury, we remember mercury is a metal, yeah? That's why yes. it's a good conductor of heat. So what are some of the applications of convection? Yeah, what are some of the applications of convection? Land and sea breeze. Land and sea breeze, yes. Uh -huh. Which other one? Ventilation of a room. Ventilations. Yes, in ventilation, how in a room, how is the, vent, the power vents? Yes. They are Where placed are vents placed? Near the uh, roof and not near the roof. They're placed near at the top. Why? Why are they placed at the top? Because warm air. Rises, isn't it? Yes. Warm air? Rises. Rises. So we'll have that, so that we have the warm air rising, so it escapes through the vents. Then we have cool, modern air flowing in into there. Godwin? Godwin is sharing something on the screen. Domestic hot water supply system, yeah? We have the heater and the water flows without any pump, yeah? With the domestic hot water supply system, we have the water flowing without requiring any pump. Why? Because warm air, warm water is less dense and rises, rises. Of course, if you have heating in a room, usually the heater will be at the bottom, yeah? not at the top. Okay? Yes. So, anybody, any question? Anybody with a question? No. Sometimes it's common to find some 
during the day when on a hot day. Yeah. What of what form of heat transfer are you shielding yourself from? Radiation. Radiation. Yes. Radiation. So basically, what you're doing is preventing radiation from getting directed to you. Yeah? Now, when we talk of convection, we have two types of convection. What are the two types of convection? Natural convection. And first convection. convection. Okay. First convection. That's good. That's press three. Press three. What yes. is natural convection? Involves change and change of density of fluid with temperature. Yeah. What? It involves change in density of the fluid with temperature. Natural. What of force? Force is um, hot and cold parts of a fluid using an external stirring. Okay. Well, natural convection is just as a result of temperature differences within a fluid, yeah? Non-uniform, non-uniform fluid temperature. For example, if you have a hot surface and you have the surrounding air, what will happen? The air near the surface, the air near the surface will become warm, isn't it? Then yes. rise. And of course, this will result in convection because denser, cooler air will flow into replace the air that is replaced. Now, when you think of a room with an air with an air condition, definitely what you're doing is that you're forcing, you're forcing air, you're blowing air or sucking air out of that, and that causes convection, and this is forced. And this is as a result of subjecting. First convection is achieved by subjecting a fluid to a pressure gradient. A pressure gradient, they are force, forcing motion to occur according to the law of fluid mechanics. Yeah? You know, when you have a fluid and there's low pressure, then we'll have the fluid moving from a region of low pressure to a region of high pressure that will result in. So natural convection is as a result of temperature gradient, temperature difference, non-uniformity of temperature within the fluid. First conve convection is achieved by creating a pressure difference resulting in movement. Okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, with that, do you think our objective of the topic our are achieved today? Yes. Remember what you said the objective was? We said by the end of the topic, by the end of the lesson, we expect that you'll be able to differentiate between heat and temperature. Are you able to differentiate between heat and temperature? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Can you now describe state the differences? Can you state the, and explain the modes of heat transfer? Yes. I, Can you describe experiments to a state factors affecting heat transfer? For example, in conduction, how could we explain solids with respect to, with respect to what, to V2? 
thickness of a material. Yes. And all that. I, I want to believe that we now have humble insight and are well versed with that topic. Yeah. Any question? Only more to be learning next week. Yeah. Next week's lesson. Yeah. Let's the, les the lesson of next week. You want us to continue the, to the next topic? We yeah. can look at we can look at uh, we can look at uh, the linear propagation of light. Okay. The next topic is like the linear propagation of light. We can look at that. Yeah.